Oh, yeah, it is Madman Mondello coming at you from the Gardner Garage here in beautiful Alabama. Hope you're all doing well, guys. I've been ripping my hair out. Okay, and, uh, well, like the title says, why on earth would you want an OG Xbox in 2022? Well, <laughs> why not? Okay, actually, the nostalgia of it is really cool. All right, and then also another feature coming, which is going to be Xbox Live 1.0 in the form of Insignia, okay, which is going to allow this thing to go online, all right? Also, the vast majority of what developers have done for this thing is insane, okay? There's quite a few of them, and there's quite a few builders out there that do these, just like myself. You know, you got Matty Suds, you got Tone Radmaker, you got Tony Kaburka. I mean, these guys have been around with the OG Xbox forever, okay? Just like me. This was one of the first systems that I hacked back when when it was when there was a mod by Team Executor for the DVD drop. So, you know, I mean, uh, yeah, I'm showing my age, okay? You know, I mean, <laughs> 20, 20 years ago, okay, you know, I mean, and here we are, Okay? And it's coming back full circle now because it seems a lot of people have been messaging me. They want these damn things, okay, which is cool, all right? Now, the OG Xbox is a great machine. It, I, for emulation, it is awesome, okay? Now, with the advent, of course, with the Xbox X series and everything, they're also going where it's showing that, you know, they lifted the DRM on a lot of things. And, you know, I mean, it's like, wow, be still my heart. Oh, my God, they lifted the, D, the DRM? Really? Just to be able to play original uh, original games and also emulation and everything, which is really cool. It's about time they got their head out of their butt and did something like that, you know? But anyway, um, what we've got here is we've got an OG Xbox, as you can tell. All right, however, though, it has been modified a little bit. All right, we've got an open Xenium chip in this thing. We have a uh, two terabyte drive. Now, now, mind you, on the original Xbox, there is four terabytes worth of games, okay? <laughs> uh, 1,339, I do believe, to be exact, or m maybe a few more, I'm not sure. Okay, but then also, you know, you have emulators as well because this thing emulates a lot of stuff, okay? Really cool. So... You know, with that, it's it gives you a vast, a vast, broad spectrum of a lot of stuff that this thing can play, which is really cool. And, you know, with it being able to get back online, that is going to add to this you know, tenfold because it's going to be wonderful because you don't, you, you don't have to have a modern one. You can have a stock one and, uh, you know... With what Insignia is doing, stock and modded Xbox are going to be able to get on that network and play together and play games together like we did back in the old days when Xbox Live 1.0, God bless its soul, was up and running, okay? For those of you who, who weren't around, okay, or not born, okay, to enjoy that, it really will bring some substance to everything that's going on these days, which is really cool. All right, but anyway, uh, what we got here, this is uh, the OG model. Now, it's a 1.4, all right? And this one, the clock, the clock cap ex was exploded. In fact, um, yeah, got it right here. Nasty little thing. And uh, put the uh, fluid all over the motherboard, which I had to, like, clean this motherboard like there was no tomorrow. Thank God no traces were rotted or anything like that, which was, oh, that's, that's another story to go into. And anyway, um, what what I did was is uh, we modded it. I put Rocky V's emu station on this thing, the latest version, 1.4. Okay, and it really it really brings to light how good emu station is. Okay, he did a wonderful job on this thing. And you know, I mean, I like XBMC for Xbox, but it's old, it's dated, and this here gives you a new aspect to it. However, though, there is a skin for emu station that emulates. XBMC for Xbox, which is, well, for gamers, I should say, which is really cool, you know? So anyway, um, what he did was, is, uh, we got an open Xenium on here, I flashed it with Sir Bias, okay, which allows me up to 16 terabytes of, uh, you know, uh, of storage, 
okay, which is cool. So I got this thing out on a two terabyte one here, okay? And we're going to take a look at the content that's on a two terabyte OG Xbox, okay? So what we're going to do is I'm going to fire this thing up. Now, mind you, um, you know, I do, I, I have done the HDMI, uh, the HD uh, make megahertz, um, you know, HD uh, adaption uh, to a couple of Xboxes already, and, you know, and it works pretty good, but for my, my purposes, I'm just using a, uh, a pound video scaler right here, okay, if you can't see it, right here, you know, they're cheap, they work, 720p, and it works really good, and, I mean, it works excellent on my, on my 75 inch, and, uh, you know, it works really good on monitors and everything, so, you know, um, pretty much, uh, you know, it's, it's updated to, well, to the, somewhat to the world today, okay, so anyway, you know, we're going to go ahead, and I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go, and I'm going to swap over the capture card right here. And then I'm going to power this thing on. All right? And we're going to check this thing out. And uh, check out what, what this thing is about. Okay? Now, there's been a lot of videos on the, on these things. But I figured I would do one, you know, an up-to-date one that would, uh, you know, cover a lot of stuff. So, as you can see, okay, we have, uh, we have an Xbox One. Uh, <laughs> Boot up screen. You can change your boot up screens on this thing and everything. You can do all that kind of good stuff. Um, and now what it's going to do, it's going gonna, it's gonna to load up into Emustation. Okay? Now, when it gets into Emustation, you're going to see it's going to look like XBMC for gamers. Okay? That's the skin that I'm running. You can change the skin very easily by pressing the start button. And there's your applications, your UI settings. Or you can go over here. Customization. You change the theme. And they have, see, they have uh, Zudora, XBMC for Gamers, and Simple, okay? Now, Simple is Emustation's uh, front end, okay? But right now, I'm using XBMC for Gamers, just so everybody can relate, all right? And, you know, you could change all kinds of settings in this thing. You change the default carbon theme color, show custom tile options, you know. I mean, the whole nine yards, you could do so much with this thing, it's crazy, all right? Uh, disable festive overlay, I mean, there's all kinds of good stuff on this thing. Uh, that allows you to change it up and make it to what suits you. All right, now, scanner. Scanner's really cool because you can manually update the systems. Now, I remember when you had to scan all the systems at one time with this thing, which was like a gigantic pain in the butt, all right, because, I mean, if you had a lot of stuff on there, oh, my God, you were there for an hour or two, all right? But you got scan all systems, manually update the systems, your scanner options, you can use the resources for Xbox artwork, override existing Xbox artwork, uh, use synopsis name formatting, which I'm doing. Okay, scan for Sega CDs. Yes, they play Sega games, of course. Refresh your carousel information, and of course you got your Xbox uh, game, Xbox games artwork installer. Okay, which will install 1,339 to be exact covers and all of the artwork for the Xbox. Okay, which is really cool. All right, now. You got some advanced settings here. You check for the update patch most uh, patch most emulator of uh, save paths, view logs, emulators folder, your media's folder, ROM paths. You can custom set those paths too if you want, if you're adventurous or whatnot. Okay, and then you can just quit right out of it. All right, but anyway, we're gonna start off here now. I got zero favorites available. Okay, now if you look under Atari uh, Atari 800, you got 143 games available. Your Atari 2600, you got 593 games available. Your Atari 5200, you got 150 games available. Atari 7800, you got 86 games available. ColecoVision, you got 189. Daphne, you actually have a bunch, but it's just that it comes up with those two. I'm going to fix that with a uh, with an icon and a short cutter. Um, so, but Daphne plays uh, Dragon's Lair, Cliffhanger, Space Ace, all, all those laser disc games. Okay? Then, of course, you got Final Burn Legends. All right? That's got 3,548 games on it. In television, which has 111. You got MAME with 1,101 games on it. You got Sega Master System with 318 games on it. Mega Drive with 430. Nintendo 64 with 212. Nintendo Entertainment System, you got 1,662 games uh, available on that. PlayStation, you got 44 games available on that. Genesis, you got 966 games. And uh, for PlayStation, there's a lot more. I just loaded what I could load, you know, in the amount of time that I'm, that I'm given. Okay, and then, of course, you got Sega CD. You got 166 games for Sega CD. Super Nintendo, you got 1,144 games. And Xbox, you have 612 games available, okay? That's not all of them. Like I said, there's a lot more, but, um, you know, we're getting close to where we're maxing out the 2 terabyte. Okay? Now, you can go to XBMC Options, okay? You can set your appearance up, um, you know, 
Lincoln Region, you know, all that kind of good stuff. Audio, calibrate screen, uh, your file manager, file manager, pretty simple file manager, shows you everything that's on the drive and everything. All right, and then of course you have your network, you have programs, system, video, acknowledgements, change log, downloader. Downloader's really cool. Downloader's got a bunch of stuff on there, as you can see. Applications, okay, artwork that you could download for all your emulation. Uh, dashboards, there's multiple dashboards. Downloadable content for games and everything else that you can download, okay? Title updates, the whole nine yards. Emulators, okay? You can install an emulator and install the perspective ROM to that emulator and it'll work. Homebrew section, okay? Yeah, a bunch of homebrew that was programmed by a bunch of crazies, okay? Mods, you can uh, actually, there's mods like the Punisher Uncensored where it gets kind of ugly, okay? <laughs> Uh, Operation Flashpoint, Elite Add-ons, Metal Wolf Chaos, English Translation, according, okay, FIFA 07, Real Gameplay, so on and so forth, Dead or Alive 3, as you can see, a bunch. Other, okay, Cash Formatter, Game Trainers, uh, you know, screensaver, uh, screensaver fan artwork, okay, themes, that's where you can download themes for this uh, front end, okay, and then of course you have your updates, where you can update the URL downloader, and uh, XBMC, Emu Station Stable. We're running 1.4 right now, so we're at the latest one, so we don't have to worry about messing with that, all right? So as you can see, there's a lot of stuff on here. System information, your summary, CPU temperature, motherboard temperature, your fan speed, all that crap, screen resolution, okay? Hard disk information, okay? Uh, it's a Western Digital, as you can see, all right? And, uh, you know, it's not locked. Your DVD ROM, uh, ROM information, which is Samsung, which is correct. Storage information. As you can see, it's pretty full. Okay, it's really getting there. Okay, uh, network information, all of your networking information and everything, your video information. All right, and then of course your hardware information, CPU speed, all that kind of good stuff. All right, I mean so on and so forth. This thing was manufactured in Taiwan, 2003, week 45, line number four. Okay, pretty interesting how they keep that data on there. <laughs> it's like wow, like we really need to do that. Okay. So anyway, as you can see, we've got a ton of games on here. Now, um, well, let's skip right to uh, Xbox right here, okay? If we hit that, we'll go ahead, we'll open it up, and we'll check it out. And I'll show you what's on here. All right, now, as you can see, nicely laid out, okay? Uh, you got your 3D cover art. You also have 2D cover art. You got all kinds of crazy stuff on this thing. And you can go on there. You know, I mean, it starts here, okay? And there's 612 titles, and they all have the artwork, and they all work. Every single one of them. Okay, so, you know, I mean, it just goes on and on. I, I mean, it just keeps going and going. Wait a minute, what was that? Ooh, yeah. Wow. Ooh. Okay, anyway, um, yeah, all right, sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm Batman, I'm Batman. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, here we go, truck me harder, okay? Uh, you know, so on and so forth. Now... You know, as you can see, there is a, you, you can go through the through the games, there is a ton of them. I mean, a ton. And it just keeps going and going and going. Holding the right trigger, it'll speed up and it'll show you, you, you know, you know, you, you pretty much your jumps here. We're just in the C's right now. Now we're in the D's, okay? I mean, as you can see, it's got almost, <laughs> I, I mean, you know, I'm going to, I have a 6 terabyte coming, which I'm going to eventually put all of this on a 6 terabyte. Okay, including the emulators and all that. So as you can see, Gun Valkyrie, Haunted Mansion, Hummer Badlands, you know, Indy Cars, Judge Dredd, you know, so on and so forth. King King Fighter, Legends of Wrestling. I mean, Lord of the Rings. I mean, it, it, it's got it's, every game that was ever made, you know, I do have for this thing. You know, but I mean, it just goes to show how much, you know, can get on this thing. Which is insane. Okay, all thanks to... Uh, as well, well, Eaton, okay, who, you know, I mean, brought, um, who brought his little, uh, FedEx Explorer to light, which is really a great program, because, man, it makes my life so, could you imagine FTPing all of this to an Xbox, okay, I've done it before, <laughs> you want to talk about, oh, God almighty, um, yeah, I could feel I could feel my facial hair growing, okay, over the days that I had to transfer FTP everything, I mean, it took, Days, okay, where with with Eaton's uh, Fat Explorer, 
I can make a whole drive in a matter of a uh, in a matter of a day with no problem, you know. I mean, so which is really cool. And as you can see, okay, we finally hit X. All right, so you know, as you can see, all kinds of good stuff on here, and then you could press the down down D pad, and you know, and then you can use the slider. You know, works just great. Now that's Xbox games, Super Nintendo. Yeah, we got a ton of Super Nintendo on here. Okay, there's 1144 games available on this thing. For Super Nintendo. And as you can see, okay, Mario World, you know, I mean, it's got all the previews and everything else, you know. Um, I do believe, uh, I think, yep, you hit Y, and of course, you know, it shows a video, you know, of, of, of the game, you know, gives you a little preview of the video and everything, okay. Oh, you know, which is really cool. There's a lot of good stuff on here. Mask, you know, Mech Warrior, I mean, Mega Man, Mega Man at the Yin Yang, okay. Yeah, metal, metal, more metal, Michael Andretti, you know, Mick and Mac, all these games from the Super Nintendo, and yes, they all do play, every single one of them plays, in fact, in fact, um, just to show you here, this is what makes it such a great little emulation machine, it really is, uh, it really is something, something to be so old to be able to run all of this stuff, I mean, without too much of a problem, is amazing, now, I built emulation machines, okay, and, you know, like Raspberry Pis and all that crap, you know, x86, you know, if you've seen my videos, you've seen some of the emulation computers that I've built and what they can do. And yes, they, they are wonderful. Takes a lot of setting up, okay, yeah, you know, and a lot of messing around with a lot of stuff. You know, you get it done and it, it's great and wonderful, but the amount of time it takes, it's, it takes it takes a long time to do that, you know. Anyway, um, we'll, we'll play Mario World, what the hell. We'll start this thing off and let's, sh let's check this out. Okay, let's see how this works. All right, now this is an emulator, and like I said, it's 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 Super Nintendo playing on an original Xbox, which is really cool. So as you can see, Super Wii Dude presents. Okay, and here it is. Okay, and there you go. I mean, and there's good old Mario World. Okay, and you know, I mean, and you can just you know go about it and play it all you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to give you the king of the coupons and every freaking thing else under the sun, all right? So anyway, uh, needless to say, there's a lot of stuff that you can do with this thing. Now, also, when you want to get out of a game, pull in on both triggers. Press the back and black button. Okay, also with Sabiris, there's some other commands where you just have where you can just reload the game, you know, or or bring back Emmy Station immediately, okay? But, um, you know, right now, when you do that, it resets the Xbox, and then what it'll do is it'll reload, uh, it'll reload the... Um, the front end, which is Emmy Station, and uh, it'll put you right back at the uh, right back at the uh, menu selection. So there you go, and there is a ton of games on here. Is that Atari 2600? Just 593 on there. Okay, let's check this out here. See now, as you can see, whoop, yeah, artwork. Forgot about that. Whoopsie. Okay, let's see here. Yeah, 2D. Yes. I should, uh, that should bring it back. But anyway, there's a ton, there is a ton of, uh, games on here from the old Atari games and everything else that you can play. Um, also Atari 5200, there's 150 games available on that thing. Okay, here, you check this out here. And like I said, I just have to, uh, I just gotta, uh, go over the artwork a little bit on this thing. But, um, other than that, though, I mean, they all play, they all play great with no problems, you know? I mean, which is really really nice to see um now and of course you got your, your Atari 7800 all right really cool 86 games available on that you know so you got all your 7800 right here okay so on and so forth now ColecoVision yes if anybody remembers ColecoVision yeah there's a ton on there um you know as you can see homebrew you know some modified ones you know so on and so forth cabbage oh my god Cabbage Patch Kids Adventures in the Park. Oh, my God. Okay. And then, of course, you have Daphne. Okay. Now, Daphne is an emulator all, all to itself. It's a loader. Okay. Now, you just you just have to click this, and that will take you to the Daphne loader. Okay. Which I've shown before in a previous video. Okay. Final Burn Legends. You got uh, 3,548 games on there that are available. Um, I'll show you what that's all about here. As soon as it loads, which of course it does take some time because 3,548 games. Okay. Anyway, as you can see, 
All right, we got a, uh, you know, there's a ton. I mean, it's, yeah, to go through all of this, it would take me hours, or, you know, I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous, okay? But, I mean, there's a ton of games on this thing. Uh, this is like a Neo Geo and all that stuff all rolled into one, you know, so there is a lot of good stuff on here. A lot of good games, a lot of good arcade games that were on here, you know, from back in the day. You got in television, you know, there we go. So we'll load up 111 games, yeah. Like I said, I still have to work on the artwork a little bit here, but no big deal. Then you, then you got Maine. You got 1101 games uh, on Maine, all right, which is pretty cool. See? So on and so forth. Okay, you have 4D Warriors, you know. And this is all Maine, all multi-arcade uh, emulation, as you can see. All kinds of good stuff on there. Then you got Sega Master System, all right. And a bunch of crap on there. Okay, so as you can see, you got all your Sega Master System here, you know, which is really cool. There's some, uh, there's some good games on here, which reminds me many years ago, okay, you know, I mean, which is so cool. Because, I mean, you know, it, it's just, it's just amazing, you know, that this thing handles all of this. And it does it so gracefully. You got Mega Drive, there's 430 games available on there. You got, uh, let's see here, we'll check this out here. And yes, you got Nintendo 64. Yes, <laughs> yes, you do. Um, you know, so you got a bunch of games like Crossfire, Crusaders, you know, I mean, all kinds of good stuff on here. You know, I mean, uh, Dinosaurs for Hire. Uh, yeah, here you go, Donald in Maui Mallard. Okay, that's your version, okay? Doom Troopers, so on and so forth. There, there, there's like, there, there's so many. It just, it's just crazy. Nintendo 64, yeah, you got 212 games available on this thing. You know, I mean, so, I mean, as you can see, it, it has become, it's a multi-arcade machine player more than anything, you know, which is, like, really crazy, you know? And, I mean, it's just it's just amazing what this thing can really handle and how much it can handle. It's it's crazy. And, like I said, like I said, though, you know, I mean, it really is something else. There is a lot with this thing that you can do. And with Insignia coming online, thanks to Luke Usher and all his team who put a lot of hard work into that into that server. Because I don't know if you guys know this or not, but, you know, Mr. Mario was on it. Uh, quite a few people were on it, testing it, using it, playing it just a little while ago. It's in, it's in alpha mode, you know, so really cool. When it comes out of alpha and goes into beta, there's going to be some people that are going to be allowed on there and everything. And then once it goes from beta to, uh, you know, release... That's when everybody's going to be able to get on and play. And, you know, and he said that it's going to be for free. Now, I don't know how he's going to do that. I really don't know. Okay, but a lot of people, he has a Patreon site and all that kind of good stuff. And, you know, a lot of people do donate to him and support him for, you know, for doing this stuff. Because, I mean, just to recreate the Xbox Live network, it's, you know, first to reverse it and understand how it works. That's, that's a feat in itself. And then to actually build it. And make it work, okay? And make it work with all the games that we have is... That's another story, you know? I mean, that in itself is just amazing. But, um, you know, needless to say, this is our uh, this is our, our little... Well, my rendition of an OG Xbox and, you know, what you can do. You can... <laughs> you can actually put all the way up to... I, I think it's 16 terabyte on this thing. I'm not sure, but I think it's 16 terabyte. So, uh, you know... Sky's the limit in whatever you want to do. So anyway, needless to say, I do hope that you like my little uh, my little run through of this nostalgic machine that has been around <laughs> forever, and it just it just it really it makes me happy to see that people are really starting to get into these OG Xboxes now, you know, and um. What it's really going to do is, you know, with the online capability of it, that's going to really, you know, set a standard. Now, you know, it's going to be real cool to be able to hook this up and play with your buddies on Halo 2 and all that kind of good stuff, you know, online. You know, mind you, though, he said in the beginning that Halo 2 is not going to be ready when it launches, okay? But you never know. You don't know. I mean, hey, who knows who's working on it or whatever. So, anyway, I hope that you all like this little uh, run-through with the OG Xbox. And I hope that you all have a great day. i got to get back to building regular standard RGHs now. Because I'm ripping my hair out. 
So, y'all have a good one, guys. I'm going to holler at you later. Have a great day.